Okay, in this uh, tutorial, what I'm going to do is go over assignment B, uh, the second of two uh, short answers that you have to do for uh, RECA. And again, uh, we're looking for 75 to 125 words for this one, and assignment B deals mainly with uh, vocabulary. And here's what it says. It says, uh, use the information below. Well, we already know that, so just never mind that part of it. Let's go ahead and read this. Prior to having the students read a textbook chapter on tree classification, a fifth grade teacher divides the students into small groups and gives each group a set of labeled photographs and diagrams of a particular type of tree, in other words, pines, with each group focusing on a different type of tree. Now let me pause for a second here. We know a couple of things. First of all, we know that this is, in fact, expository text. That's the one thing that we know, and we know that it's at a fifth grade level. With expository text, we know that we are going to be dealing with difficult vocabulary. Remember that there's one type of vocabulary that we call Tier 1, and that is your simple, basic, communicative uh, vocabulary. Tier 1 vocabulary is your everyday vocabulary, uh, words that students will become uh, proficient in rather quickly. Uh, if they're second language learners, they'll, uh, they'll get that um, through exposure and practice and so forth. It's basic communicative uh, language. Uh, tier 2 vocabulary is a little less common. Uh, tier 2 vocabulary will be words maybe that are a little bit beyond um, you know, everyday use, like the word democracy or liberty, for example. And we know that there are some good direct translations from one language to another that are going to work because of positive transfer. Uh, but that's not always the case. Like li liberty and libertad will work. Uh, but embarrassed and embarrassada don't work so well as uh, I found out the hard way. Now, we also have uh, tier uh, three vocabulary words, and those words are your content words, content area, highly specialized words. And if we're going to be talking about uh, tree classification, as you see right in here, I think that you and I can agree that those are going to be um, tier three words. Those are going to be more challenging, less common. And so one of the things that needs to be done then is to find a way to make that vocabulary accessible to every student in the class. And the way that we're going to do that is through differentiated, and I just wrote the letter B for differentiated instruction, uh, differentiated instruction. That says differentiated instruction, everybody. OK, so through differentiated instruction, uh, the way this is being set up is really for that purpose. You have the teacher dividing the students into small groups. That's a part of differentiated instruction. Giving groups a set of labeled photographs and diagrams of a particular type of tree. And the reason that we're giving those labeled photographs and diagrams to the students is sort of to uh, help them either activate their prior knowledge about a subject so that they know that they're going to be reading about um, you know, in this case, pine trees or types of trees, or if they have never experienced a pine tree in their lives, they'll at least have some uh, artificial, uh, you know, or the, not an artificial, but they'll at least have some kind of visual um, element in their in their minds as they are uh, reading and learning this new vocabulary for the first time. Okay, now the next part says the students examine their photographs and diagrams, write down as many characteristics as they can about their assigned tree, and then present their findings to the whole class. So let's only look at what the students are doing. There is visual information here, visual. There is um, also writing that is taking place, or orthography. If you want a big word for uh, writing, there's orthographic elements to this activity. We have visual, we have writing. Uh, we also have speaking. We're working on a variety of different skills in here and uh, um, modes of instruction, the visual, for example. But we also have uh, speaking going on in here. And so for the students, uh, when you're differentiating instruction, uh, you need to be trying to hit all of these different modes and different uh, learning styles. Some are visual learners, some are kinesthetic learners, some are uh, you know, into writing more than others, and others are into public speaking. So this is using a variety of different ways to try to get the students to comprehend, grasp, uh, secure, and uh, be able to use that brand new vocabulary that will uh, certainly come up in their texts.
As students share their ideas, the teacher writes down the keywords and phrases on the board. Pine trees have pine cones, have needles, the needles grow in clusters, the needles are green in both the summer and the winter, and also introduces new terminology. Trees that have cones are called conifers. And so notice that if you have in your prior knowledge base, if you already know what a pine uh, tree is and you know what pine cones are, it's easy to attach new vocabulary words like conifers for uh, types of trees like pines that shed cones. Uh, pretty easy to get those associations to stick, especially if the uh, prior knowledge is there. And if it isn't, that's why you're doing everything uh, that precedes the reading of this lesson to try to get that prior knowledge or uh, get the elements into the prior knowledge so that things will register when they read them. The teacher then conducts a guided whole class discussion during which the students identify the characteristics shared by more than one type of tree uh, having cones and sort the trees by these characteristics. Conifers, pines, firs, hemlocks, spruces, cedars, and larches are all apparently part of the conifer family. All right, well, let's look at the question now. We have an idea of what the activity is. It's, it contains differentiated instruction that involves things like uh, activity activities like writing, speaking, um, and a lot of visuals are going into this activity too in the form of photographs and diagrams. So here's what they ask you. Using your knowledge of reading instruction, write a response in which you describe how the teacher can effectively differentiate instruction with respect to the activity in order to address the needs of the students in the class who are English learners. Okay, so really we're going to focus on English learners. How would we modify or adapt this activity to focus on English learners? Explain why the instructional strategy you develop, described would be effective in addressing the needs of these students and promoting their development of vocabulary, academic language, and or background knowledge. So what you're really being asked to do is to provide a benefit of how the teacher could effectively differentiate instruction for a particular group because there is differentiated instruction taking place in that activity uh, but now we really want to focus on English learners. What could we do uh, with this activity to accomplish that? Okay, well, let me show you what their uh, response is, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Since the activity in the textbook chapter require knowledge of vocabulary that's not often used in everyday speech, because it's tier three vocabulary, like cones, needles, and clustered, and will likely be unfamiliar to English learners, so that's one impediment to this, of course, uh, is the vocabulary is not the familiar tier one kind, it's of the tier two and three variety, the teacher should lead a discussion with them beforehand. Now, this is with the English learners. So they're going, the differentiated instruction will take place in the form of focusing on the English learners, perhaps in a separate group, uh, to do the following. In which, let me get my highlighter working, in which the teacher uses the visuals, like the photographs and the diagrams, to, one, identify and activate their related knowledge, and two, explicitly teach them more basic but essential academic vocabulary. They'll need to complete the activity and comprehend the text uh, book chapter successfully. So this is um, specialized instruction for English learner taking place within an activity that is also differentiated. So this is a subset sort of, of differentiated instruction from the broader differentiated instruction that was taking place. Uh, the teachers should reinforce new vocabulary by having the English learners enter the words in their science notebooks along with notes and drawings about the words meanings. So here you have some, you can think of it this way that the instructor is uh, in ensuring that these English learners um, have their have these elements in their prior knowledge. If you just throw them in with all of the other students during that whole group and the small group activity, they have the potential for getting lost. So here the differentiated instruction is taking place individually or in a small group, for example, to make sure that that prior knowledge is filled with the appropriate associations required to comprehend what is going to be done in the um, whole and small group activity with everyone. Okay, so one another aspect of that is to uh, use uh, this element. The teacher should reinforce new vocabulary by having English learners enter the words in their science notebook along with notes and drawings about the words meanings. So there's more associative things going on, more scaffolding, moving them toward the mainstream uh, differentiated activity happening in, happening in the classroom. Here's your uh, benefit. The strategy would be effective in addressing the needs of English learners because it uses visuals to support their understanding and act 
activates their background knowledge, explicitly teaches essential vocabulary to support their learning and reading, and reinforces new vocabulary through discussion and writing. All right. Um, just note a couple of things that in this one, um, they may ask you not just about uh, English learners as they have done so here. Uh, they may ask you about uh, struggling readers or students with uh, special needs, with learning disabilities. We'll come back to advanced learners in a second. For the varieties of students who may be struggling or have uh, special needs, something to bear in mind in this activity is uh, the following. First of all, with a student who's struggling, it would def definitely depend on what they're struggling on. If it's uh, writing, for example, then in this activity, writing is not the focus, and so you would probably want to have a more visual uh, and kinesthetic way of uh, instructing them if that is the case, um, because you don't want the writing to get in the way of what this activity is really meant to do, which is to develop prior knowledge. If you have a special needs student who, for example, can only learn one concept at a time, there are way too many concepts going on in this activity. You have, for example, looking at different types of trees, writing down characteristics, uh, trying to make associations between different types of pines, firs, hemlocks, spruces, cedars, and larches, along with the characteristics, and oh my goodness, doing some kind of whole group uh, of categorization of all of these things. It's too much. So what Rika now wants you to do with special education is really, it's, it's, it's the idea of this, that you do like one, and this is Om, let me, I guess I've been in yoga too long, um, that should be uh, one uh, concept at a time, and then you aim toward mastery of that concept and then you move on to the next concept. So you really have to move uh, slowly. It's not, slowly. It's not like slow, a slower and louder approach. It's teaching one concept at a time toward mastery and then building and building and building. It's sort of, conceptually, you can think of it as sort of going around in a circle like this where one becomes one and two and then one and two become three and four where you constantly and recursively uh, try to build on these skills for um, students who have uh, special needs. Okay, so that uh, pretty much takes care of that response, and um, well, that's